What up, friends and family? Welcome back to I Hold Shift TV. You know, I keep thinking about that intro, and I kind of want to keep changing it. But whatever, we'll figure it out later. And uh, welcome to a new patch. Speaking of, this is a brand new patch. This is the, uh, what are they calling it? This is the Hitbox <laughs> patch. Clever, clever high res. And of course, the biggest change to this patch are the tighter and more succinct hitboxes on the character models. So I'm sure most of you, as you've looked through and played a couple of games, you've noticed you're probably not hitting nearly as many shots as you used to. That's okay. You just got to get used to it. You're not going to get the same amount of forgiveness as you were before as far as how much you were actually hitting. Of course, with the reduced projectile uh, size as well. It means, well, you're going to be hitting more accurately on those hitboxes, so you're going to start seeing a lot more of those headshots coming through. At least, that's what I'm trying to go for, is trying to hit those headshots, considering all the other big time-to-kill changes. We'll get into that. Let's dig through these patch notes as well, and uh, you guys will notice that I'm playing Assassin in, uh, in these clips. These are just three games that I played earlier in the day and recorded just some of the cool kills that happened. Uh, everyone that I've heard of, you know, that have that I've talked to, has been saying, "Oh, Assassin's not good anymore because of the health changes. The sniper rifle's bad." Well, keep your baby rage in your pants. I think it's just fine, and it's my main class, and I'm not complaining about it whatsoever. But we'll get there. We'll talk about it. Just enjoy the gameplay while we talk through. So the first big thing is the fog circle sizes have been reduced as they near the end of the game. This is uh, something that you might not initially feel, but you will actually notice it from a pacing and tempo standpoint of the game, as the game will actually continue to have more action, especially in the late game when a lot of players were kind of just camping in buildings and camping on the outsides of the circles and waiting until the numbers just dwindled down. I have noticed in the couple of games that I've played just today and a handful yesterday, some of these tighter circles have had up to 15 players in them when they normally had like five. So although the kill ratio is still very heavily in the front side of the game, this change is actually very drastically changing how you play in the middle portion of the game when it comes down to when can you successfully get to a forge. You're, I, think, I think you're going to start seeing that forges are going to have a lot more action throughout all parts of the game, not just near the beginning and the end. You're going to start seeing a lot more action in the middle. That's obviously pretty huge, so kind of keep that in mind as your tempo uh, of the game starts to change just a little bit more significantly towards the faster side of things. Obviously, the hitboxes have a major rework. They're now tighter to the player's shape and animations. This should change significantly. Uh, oh, this change should significantly improve hit accuracy, which is awesome because I'll be the first one to say that there have been a number of shots that I've hit that, uh, that I don't think I should. Uh, to be completely honest, like around corners, a little clip of like that crossbow shot right there in the other patch probably would have hit him hugging that corner. So I'm really happy about these patches. It definitely raises the skill gap. I'm just hoping that all of you players out there that are mad about this and you're not finding yourself getting the same amount of success that you may have had before, take the time to really train your aim. Really learn that projectile speed and how big that projectile size is before you start to give up on it. Updated the text uh, color presentation for headshots, whatever. Not the biggest deal in the world. It's, I guess, something a little bit significant if you were missing that before, but not so much. The other big thing is skydiving controls have been tweaked to make it easier to land where players intend from far distances. Now, I, I tested this out. I tested a plane that started from Sentinel, and I jumped right at the beginning, was able to get all the way to Northport, and then turn and get to the furthest side of the new cold outpost, the new tower at the top right part of the map. It's crazy. It's insane. It's actually wild. I, I really think that this needs to be reverted or it needs to be toned down significantly because honestly, it kind of eliminates the need of having the Zeppelin at all. You can just get wherever you want on the map without really any consequence whatsoever. So it's an interesting one. I would say that you're going to start seeing, you know, you're going to notice very quickly. But about everybody is just jumping immediately. Uh, at the very beginning of the, of the Zeppelin, because there's just not a point of staying in it anymore. You can, you know, find out where you want to go. You can track people while you're falling. It's just, yeah, I, I don't know. I, that needs to be reverted just a little bit. The first fog circle will no longer appear on the map before players have landed. This is a significant change from before. Uh, if you do remember back, it was a situation where you could see the circle before you even got into game. Now you're not seeing it until about, I would say like the minute mark in, 30 second mark in. I didn't really pay too much attention, but 
you will notice that you're not going to see where those circles are. I'm okay with this. I think from a competitive standpoint, that's actually really smart because you don't just have people funneling into the same area every single time. It forces you to play the circle as well as your opponents. I like that a lot. It makes people need to be more aware of the map. And you got two minutes anyways between the first circle closing, so plenty of time to uh, adjust where you're going to be going. A couple new languages to the game. Sweet. Remove the emote uh, keybind. Emote it could not be accessed through the VGS system. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, bup, 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 bup. And then, oh, hear about this. Implemented improvements for server performance. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but typically uh, my upload rate where I'm at is not so great. About four up, maybe five if I'm lucky. And when I stream and play at the same time, I'm usually hitting about 130 ping while I'm uploading at about 2,500 bitrate, which is obviously not great. But I noticed last night when I was playing that my ping was down to about 60 while I was streaming. So I don't know what it is that high res did to the servers. I don't know if they just got better connected servers or what but they're incredible the rubber banding issue is essentially completely gone and apparently there's more still planned as far as the changes to the server priority so that's really really interesting uh it's going to be fun to see how much more uh stable the servers do get over the next couple of days uh deployed turret ability has been added back in the game resident sleeper now another big significant change in the gameplay aspect this is not just general things but more specific the helmet is no longer granting cooldown reduction. A lot of people did obviously realize that epic and legendary armor pieces were giving bonus properties to them. The helmet was giving a cooldown reduction boost to all of your abilities. That has been changed. Now it's going to give you headshot protection. The epic will give you 35% protection. Legendary will give you 50% protection. That's pretty significant. Not to mention the other big change which is starting health is no longer 1200 it's 1500 another extra 300 hp points but on top of that you're also getting 100 armor by default at the start so you're actually starting with a total of 1600 hit points now on top of that the armor parts are scaling up to 350 at the high end so what does that mean 350 times the four is 1400 Plus the 100 from the armor that you start with means you're going to have a total of 3,000 hit points late game. That's insane. That's so much health. But here's the thing. I'm fine with it. I'm totally okay with it. Even as someone who plays a lot of Assassin and was enjoying very much only having to two-tap people with the sniper rifle, I'm still finding a lot of success with the sniper rifle. The only thing that's really different right now is that it's going to force you to start quick switching more. You're only going to be able to take one shot, maybe two if your opponent is at a medium distance from you, and then you got to switch and use your secondary. So all of you assassins out there that are complaining about this, stop complaining and just get better. Use the quick switch in your loadout when you have purple or golden gloves. You can switch very, very fast between your secondary weapon. Make sure you have a good one, hit your first shot, and then three or four hit the person with your secondary weapon. By the late game, if you don't have a purple or a golden gun in your secondary slot, you're probably not doing it right anyways. So that's my biggest thing. Now, on top of this, there are a couple of considerations. The DPS overall for Assassin and Hunter most notably does go down pretty significantly you want to see things like the longbow and the sniper rifle hit a little bit harder so how do you change it do you add more damage values to those weapons yeah you could but how about this what not about having a faster reload speed for those weapons doesn't sound a little bit more enticing yeah make the player that is you know if you're high risk make these players that are playing hunter and assassin hit your shots but at least don't punish them so much for having a legendary weapon. And by reload speed for Hunter, I mean the drawback speed. It needs to draw back just a hair faster, I think, just to compensate a little bit. If you take a look at the current damage numbers, as far as what, the, what everything looks like, it's actually pretty interesting to see because at the end of the day, the DPS for the longbow and the sniper are actually near the bottom. The longbow, since it shoots about, it takes about two seconds or so to fully draw back, or about a second fully, yeah, two seconds to fully draw back. So you're getting only about 450 DPS, like damage per second, 900 per shot. The sniper is hitting for 1100. The damage per second is, you know, again, with the reload speed, it's probably closer to about 600. So it's really not so great. 
I think that you need to look at the damage numbers, of course, if you're high res, but on top of that, take a look at the reload and drawback speeds. I think that might be one way to help bring those weapons a little bit back into the viability charts as far as being able to use them more exclusively. But I, I do like the change a lot. I think late game, you're seeing a lot more skillful fights happen. It's not just, I hit you twice the potion launcher and now you're dead. And like, it's not quite that. It's not the same thing. Even with the ax, it's like, oh, I hit you with the, hunter, uh, the throwing ax a couple of times, so now you're dead. It makes it actually feel like you have to outskill your opponent a little bit more. It just, you're hitting harder. The time to kill across the board actually feels pretty even from start to finish, which is definitely interesting. And it forces you to make sure that you are getting good legendary weapons, not only for your primary, but also for your secondary. A couple other fixes as we finish this video up there, there are some weapon changes the auto rifle and burst rifle getting some changes the auto rifle getting a clip size increased to 30 from 20 the damage increased to 90 108 126 and 144 it's about a 13 percent increase the burst rifle damage is also being increased to 125 150 175 and 200 now here's the thing about this i I still think these weapons are bad. I'm just going to be completely candid. Even with those numbers, if you take a look at the damage breakdown, it's about a 13% increase for each. They still sit near the bottom of the DPS charts in each category, with the exception of actually, to be honest, it's, it's interesting to see, the slug rifle is actually DPS-wise a little bit lower, but that's only if you're hitting every single shot with your auto rifle and every single burst projectile in the three-round burst from the burst rifle. How many more times can I say burst in a, in a sentence? It's The sentence is bursting to life. Uh, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> no more of that. It's just interesting because these weapons I still think are pretty garbage at the end all be all. You want something better. If you find a purple one, sure, why not? But even still, even if I had a green one of those weapons, I think I would rather have like a white slug or a white heirloom to be honest. So it's just one of those things, a little bit different. And then beyond that, sniper rifle headshot bonuses have been increased from 100% to 150%. So again, stop complaining, snipers out there. Just hit your headshots. And then shotguns can now headshot for 50% bonus damage, whatever. A handful of bug fixes as well. A couple of investigations also have been going on right now. So keep in mind that all of your feedback is gold as you uh, continue to play the game. And again, just have an open mind about these things. I'm actually perfectly okay with this change. Yeah, the health pool is a little extreme. The time to kill change is a little extreme, but I'm fine with it. It's forcing you to hit shots. I feel like I'm not getting outskilled as much as I was previously by randos who just happened to get a firebomb down in a potion launcher. Looking at all of you rando engineers out there. But there it is. Keep playing. Try out the different classes. Enjoy yourselves. Until next time, I hope that you keep holding it down.